academic side of administration and not the side which perpetuated some of the problems Desi was talking about. Dr. Pisani graduated from the University of Michigan in 84 with a BA in Poli Sci and he earned his PhD from Stanford. He joined UNM in 1992. His research examines democracy, dictatorship, and war with special attention to the promotion of democracy during U.S. military interventions. His book, Democracy at the Point of Bayonets, was published by Penn State Press, and his research has appeared in the American Political Science Review, the flagship journal of his discipline, and an international organization, the top journal in the subfield of international relations. At UNM, Dr. Pisani has won university and college-wide teaching awards. Today, he is speaking with the intriguing title of Greek Debt, Tea Party, and the Future of UNM. We welcome Dr. Pisani. Thank you very much, Sarita, and also thank you very much, uh, Desi, for uh, starting with that uh, attack on the administration since I'm part of the administration. <laughs> Academic side, but still, I've, I've been in a, um, a college-level administrator for uh, three and a half months now as the interim dean, and I was chair of the political science department before then. And these last few months have given me a lot of opportunities to think about how tremendously difficult it is to fulfill the mission of a public research institution in this contemporary era that we live in. And so Greek debt, Tea Party politics, and the future of UNM is, uh, is my effort to try and make sense out of how one can be successful as an interim dean of arts and sciences in providing the research excellence, the teaching excellence that will help our students to succeed and will serve our state in the tradition of, of public education. And I, I say that as a graduate of a state school, the University of Michigan, as an undergraduate. And I got to be an undergraduate at University of Michigan because I grew up in the state. And it was relatively affordable at that point because the state still supported the institution with large resources. That was about five uh, collapses of the auto industry ago. Actually, I started uh, in 1980 and graduated in 1984, and uh, tuition for in-state residents tripled during that time because that was the first collapse of the auto industry in the wake of the Arab oil embargo, or the oil crisis of, of 1979. Today, the University of Michigan gets about three or four percent of its total budget from the state. And tuition for in-state residents, I, I heard, is in the 20,000s. And so I'm trying to figure out how can one provide that kind of public education that really serves the state of New Mexico in this context. And what makes it tremendously difficult, besides the corporatization of universities, which I am now uh, an instrument of, which makes me somewhat uncomfortable, <laughs> but besides that general trend, we're operating in an environment where the latest crisis is the, the crisis in Europe surrounding Greece's inability to pay its debts, which is a crisis in part because most of Greece's debts are held by German banks and French banks and American banks. And so we've been working on this uh, for the last several years. How can we figure out a way in which the German banks and the French banks and the US banks will be paid that debt. And this reminds us that from the beginning of our own economic catastrophe in, in, in 2008, that has become a global catastrophe, that the fundamental problem is we've had a breakdown in the global financial system. And it's a reflection of uh, different specific manifestations in different places. So here it was the, the mortgage bubble that burst and that threatened the banks and there, therefore required some form of public response which turned out to be to bail out the banks. And in essence they've, they've had the same sort of debate in Europe. How do you pay Greek government debt so that private banks can get paid. It's taken them several years to get to the point where perhaps the banks themselves will have to take 
a, a write down on some of those loans. But it's gotten to a point where it's taken almost a complete breakdown in all economic activity in the country of Greece, which has reverberated throughout Europe. And so now even Silvio Berlusconi may be out of a job. The Teflon Premier, or Prime Minister in Italy, because of this ongoing crisis. For the United States, and this, I'm actually a, a scholar of international war rather than international political economy, but it's hard for me to see anything other than a Japanese style decade of stagnation for this country, of low or no growth as far as the eye can see. Financial crises take a very long time to work out of. And there is no clear path for how this country is going to emerge from its ongoing financial crisis. There's no clear idea of how Europe is going to emerge from its financial crisis. And it's all part of one global economic financial system. So we're not likely to have a lot of resources to invest in any sort of activity because we're going to have stagnant growth for some time. And then you add to that Tea Party politics in this country. And the one thing that all Republicans can agree on, I used to be one a long time ago, don't tell anyone. I was young. I, I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had no choice. But the one thing that all Republicans can agree on is, is that the solution to every problem is to lower taxes. Less taxes. And for, for a lot, there's also a principled commitment to less government. But there's no consensus amongst Republicans on which parts of government one should reduce. I can think of no better example of that than Rick Perry couldn't remember which agencies he would shut down at the debate yesterday. <laughs> Uh, what is it? Commerce, uh, education, duh. and uh, what's? Oh, the third one is. Do you know what the third one was? What was the third one? Energy. Energy. Yeah, because he probably doesn't realize that what the Department of Energy does is run the nuclear weapons complex. <laughs> Why did the banks loan money without collateral? One part foolishness, one part a realization that if it turned out poorly, they would likely get a, uh, a government bailout. Well, that's stupid, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and so we have to pay for that. And we have to pay for that you know, twice over. One, because limited economic activity ensure that you have uh, just an ongoing stagnation that it's not clear how we're going to get out of. And then you add that to political context where you have a party that agrees on one thing only, reduce taxes. And can't quite agree on what you don't spend money on if you're not going to have that tax revenue. So the easiest response is budget deficits that are huge for a long period of time trillion dollar deficits as far as the eye can see. Unfortunately, one of the few things that a large number of people can agree on is that we should reduce spending on higher education. And it's because if you look at the federal budget debates, if you look at the federal budget debates, Social Security is off the table. Medicare is off the table for the most part. The defense budget is off the table for the most part. Interest on the debt is off the table for the most part. And the fact that they cut a deal where they said, okay, if we don't come up with a grand master plan for cutting the budget, we're going to slash defense spending in a significant way, and Medicare spending is frightening every member of Congress to death because, oh my God, there's not a chance in hell that we're actually going to cut defense or Medicare that much. So they're going to find a way to weasel out of that agreement. And then what's left? About 10 to 15% of the federal budget is left. And that's 
includes things like the National Science Foundation, which funds a lot of the tremendous research that we do at this university. That means, you know, they'll probably have to cut the National Institute of Health, which funds a lot of life-saving research that's done at this university and that other university that's across Lomas from us, called the Medical Center. <laughs> that means, in a very specific way that has tremendously impacted a lot of students here, cutting subsidized student loans for graduate students. And that's already happened. And they do that because they have a consensus that they're not going to raise taxes, and they're going to lower them if they can. And they control at least one House of Congress. And they don't want to touch 80% of the federal budget. And so the first step is, we'll just spend more money than we have till the end of time. And eventually that does come back to bite you. And then the other part is that it means that you have a consensus that if you're gonna cut somewhere, it's on that 15 to 20% that's left. At the state level, you don't have the option of deficit spending. To my knowledge, New Mexico still doesn't have its own independent currency. Maybe we should think about that. So we balance our budget. And if you look at what things are in the state budget, one of the easiest things to cut is higher education. So economic stagnation that flows from the financial crisis that is going to be with us for some time, and digging out of it, a political context where it's incredibly difficult to raise taxes, and a lot of pressure to reduce taxes, and where 80% of the national budget and 80% of the state budget can't be touched for a variety of political reasons. Higher education gets cut at the national level and higher edu education gets cut at the state level. And so what do we do in that context? And unfortunately, the crisis that we have to look forward to is that there are going to be some administrators, and now I'm one of them, who's going to say, if we want to advance our educational mission and pay for all the athletics and all that other stuff, but if we're going to hire more faculty, if we're going to hire more graduate assistants, if we're going to invest in our teaching mission and to enhance our research, we're going to have to ask for more tuition from students who don't have the money because we're in an economic stagnation in a world in which they don't even know after they get their degrees from UNM whether they'll have a job waiting at the other end. And so all of this, is, all of this has become clear to me in my, in my months as an administrator. The solutions aren't terribly clear to me at this time because if I were a student, I would be saying, don't raise my tuition. Don't raise my fees. As an administrator, I'm not sure how I provide a quality education with the resources that are likely to be available to me. If you've got any good ideas of how to get out of that conundrum, please share them. It's a, yes, that's a good idea. But it's a tax, and I don't think that the Congress is going to pass that. Get rid of the Congress. <laughs> uh, what, what kind of a tax is that? A financial transaction right. tax. Right. Tobin tax. Yeah. Okay, in the name of time, we'll say a big thank you to Dr. Pisani.